welcome to Make and Take Tuesday. This is a weekly series where I pull out my paper crafting stuff and we work together to make something beautiful. And I have um, actually have two different series on my YouTube channel. One is called Throwback Thursday, where I dig back into my stash and pull out older retired collections so that we get into our papers and we use what we have. And the other is called Make and Take Tuesday, where I use some of the newer tools and supplies in my stash to inspire you with your new product. So today we're working with a Spellbinders die. This is called the Eyelet Lace Frame. And as you can see, it's really ornate. It's really beautiful. And it's got all these separate pieces. The outside frame is just scalloped. You could use this to create a shaped card. And then there's this beautiful stitched eyelet inset that goes inside of there. Then there's this lovely etched frame piece. This die cut's so pretty. And then this really neat kind of hem stitch. And then another etched rectangle. And then this ornate eyelet stitching and then a little oval in the center. So you could do just this die um, with like white paper um, and have a really beautiful card. However, uh, you probably all guess that is not what I have done. I am also, my other new thing that I'm working with is a collection that I let myself get myself for Christmas called Simple Story, Simple Vintage Weathered Garden. And this is a beautiful collection. It's kind of these um, greeny, gray, you know, like wintry colors and lots of butterflies, beautiful patterns. I got the six by eight and I like to do this um, because the patterns are scaled down great for card making. And then they've actually started putting three by four cards in and then there are these larger pieces that you can do wall hangings and stuff with. So there's this, and then I also got the 12 by 12, which I've already cut into and used, as you can see, but beautiful. It's just a really soft, pretty collection. Um, I think this would work well for spring too, not just for winter, but really pretty patterns, beautiful images. And then like, I love that botanical page. Um, the sticker sheet comes with the collection pack. And then I also got, because I like to use these on slimline cards, I got the banners. So that is the paper collection. We're just going to put that over to the side for a minute. And I'll show you what I've started working on. Um, this is going to be a card. And see, here's that beautiful frame that I was telling you about. I die cut this out of a pearlized uh, cream card stock. And it's, so it's got a pretty shimmer, but the detail is beautiful. And I've backed this with foam tape. And then I die cut the white piece using the die and then matted it on the same sort of moss green color and um, cut that out. So we're going to, I back this also with foam tape because this is a very um, simple card. There's not a lot of... Um, for lack of a better word, bells and whistles. Like a lot of my cards are super layered, super detailed. This one is gonna be, I think, more simple. I haven't quite figured out the design completely yet, but I kinda know where I'm going. And then I dug into my stash, and of all things, I really like the way this purple and green plaid, what is this called? Purple, lavender, and parrot ribbon. And what I want to do before I glue this panel down is I want to just run my ribbon. I think I like this. I keep going back and forth. I think I like it, um, which I know sounds funny. I either like it or I don't, but sometimes it's really hard to tell until you get things all the way put together. But I think I like the way this looks. Um, it adds a little pop of bright color that I think this needs, actually, because it can read a little sad, um, for lack of a better word. I'm looking for my... Um, 
score tape. Just so I can secure that ribbon. So now I'm committed. There's no going back now. Once you put the score tape down, it's pretty much game over. Um, oops. Okay. So I want this ribbon to come over to this side. And now I tie a bow on the side. Sometimes the secret to a good bow is folding that middle section in half because it's going to make the loops poof out a little bit. And you do have to work it a little bit once you've tied it to um, because the loop is going to want to be folded in half, but you just show it who's boss and make it do what you want it to do. All right, I think I like that, guys. Let's see what we think. Trim my tails. Yeah, I like that. And I'll be able to work on this better once I get it glued down. I'm just going to line this up in the center of my card. And one of the reasons I added the, the um, foam tape is just dimension. Dimension is really going to help this card stand out. I'm going to retie this bow so that I like the way it looks. And then, see, this is the piece that I die cut with that I don't know if it's hem stitch, but isn't that beautiful? So I did this also with the foam tape on the back. I'm gonna line this up. Like that. So now we have just simple and elegant on the cover. And I'm I really like that. That frame is so beautiful that eyelet frame you don't really want to compete with it i'm just going to set this aside for the moment we will come back to this so just put this in a safe place and now i've taken this sort of moss green cardstock i've cut two five and a quarter inch by um eight and a half inch panels and i joined them together with score tape to make this big long panel and now we're going to create our card base So I'm going to score this at seven and a quarter. And let's go one, two, three. Let's go eight. And then fold here. And let's go. I'm only going to go seven on the inside. And the reason for that is when you put a box pocket in, one, two, three, it's gonna sit up less awkwardly if you have a shorter side on the back than you do on the front. And the width of our card is five and a quarter. And we know that we have a three quarter inch depth. So three quarters and three quarters is an inch and a half on each side. So five and a quarter plus three is eight and a quarter. That's pretty good math for this early in the morning. So I'm gonna cut this doesn't matter how big of a table you have, there's never enough room. Have you ever noticed that? I'm gonna cut this at eight and a quarter. And I want the depth of my pocket to be three. Move all of this stuff back over there. Okay. So on our sides, we're going to go one, two, three quarters. <sighs> one, two, three quarters. Flip it, do the same thing. You don't have to flip it if you don't want to. I just find it's easier than trying to squeeze into that corner. So see, these are going to be our box sides. And because we left that little flap on the bottom, 
we don't have to score anything along the bottom. See, this is just going to sit on there like that. All right, I feel like this cardstock, it's really pretty, but it's only about 80 pounds. And I want it to be, I want it to be heavier than that. So I want to line it. But before I do, see, there's all these steps. If you ever noticed, it's never one thing. Um, I want to trim this down. Y'all, this is how I, this is how I work. I mean, I think as I go, I always have a vision. I like to tell people I always have a vision, but I never have a plan. In other words, I don't have it all written out beforehand what I'm going to do. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to find my scoring tool, is I'm going to score Uh, let me see, this is six inches wide, and our card is five and a quarter inches wide. I'm going to score this at five and a half, and then I'm going to bring in my cutter. I'm going to cut this at five. And I think this is just going to fit better. So if you haven't figured out what we're doing, which I wouldn't blame you at this point, we're making a flat page. Um, but I want to put that back behind our um, liner. You'll see. Hang with me, guys. This is what it's like inside my head. I look at um, Jenny Nemchek is one of my best friends in the whole world, and I'm such a fan of her amazing creations. And she has this incredible ability to know exactly where she's going before she even starts a project. And I have to tell you guys, that is baffling to me. I have never once known exactly what I was going to do when I started anything. I have an idea, like I know oh, I want to do this elevated frame with this die, um, and I want to do a box pocket card, but I, from there, I have no idea. So I am in total awe. I think Annette Green creates a lot that way, too, where she just knows going in. Like, they just seem to know going in, and I'm just not that way. I am much more harem scarum. Ideas pop into my head. You know, and I go down the rabbit hole and follow the idea. And sometimes I'm really glad I did. And sometimes I think, well, probably should have left good enough alone. But that's how you learn and grow as an artist. And um, so I don't really regret it too much. Oh, yeah, I want to put this down. I'm talking to you guys. I usually work all by myself. And believe it or not, in real not in real life, I'm not much of a talky person. I'm... I'm pretty quiet. I like solitude. I like my own company. I might listen to music. I might listen to, um, you know, a sermon. I might listen to an audio book. But I, I don't do well working with others. It's one of the reasons I've never really taken classes. And it's one of the reasons I don't teach physical classes. I like working by myself and for a long time I thought there was something wrong with me because that okay do you see what I did here I just adhered my pocket piece that we cut onto the bottom and look how nice that works so now we're going to put adhesive here and we're going to put adhesive here and I'm just going to fold these flaps in so they're neat and square up against the side. Oops. I'm going to get this one in too. Sometimes this pearlized um, cardstock, this is old stuff. I bought this on clearance years and years ago. I think I got it. It, it used to be made by um, Coordinations. And um, 
when they decided they weren't going to make it anymore, I got it for like 50 sheets and a pad for like 79 cents or something. Um, and I just bought them all. I bought every single one that they had. So I have like a lifetime supply of this paper. All right, so see, there's our box pocket. There's our flap page. So that works really well. Now we need to make a cover for this box pocket. And um, just thinking here, that's not quite big enough. Let's, um, oh yeah, that's right, I had taken, yeah. So we need to cut a liner to go here, and this was five inches wide. So we're gonna do our liner. Four and three quarters. And we're just gonna go, uh, we're just gonna go, I think to five and a half, because look what happens. Um, the box pocket's gonna cover up a lot of that, so there's no point. Okay, so decision time. Do we wanna go with the floral that's in the heart, or do we want to go with our dictionary page? I'm leaning toward the dictionary page. What did you choose? You can tell me in the comments. All right, and now, so we know this is, we know this is five and a quarter plus an inch and a half, which is two quarters. Ooh, it's early, six and three quarters is what we want to do this by three and a half. So three and a half. I'm going to do this the cheater way. I'm going to go ahead and do my one, two, three quarters here. And I'm going to do one, two, three quarters here. And I'm going to bend this here, and that's going to let me know where to bend it here. Do you see what I did there? So that's six, one, two, three. The only reason I did it that way <clears throat> is that this cutter only goes up to six inches and I was too lazy to move everything off of my 12 inch cutter. <laughs> so true confessions. <laughs> the things you do when you don't feel like moving a thousand different uh, bits and pieces around for the umpteenth time. All right, so we're gonna score these. It's really hard. Look how pretty this collection is. It's really hard to choose which side you want to use. And this is like a um, a cornice. You know how you do a cornice on a window? I think that's what it's called. So I'm just cutting up this vertical score line to the horizontal. And I'm doing the same thing over here. I'm going to bring this in and double check myself. And it looks oh well it's short but that's okay we can fix the top so i must have gone three and a half on this all right well that's okay uh, it will all be good i'm just going to ink these edges up just to keep everything consistent all right so see these little tabs put your ink on your tabs Hold your tabs in and it automatically wants to form this little corner so just hold that there make sure you're neat and square repeat this over on this side all right 
come in with your adhesive. I always like to get right in the creases because <clears throat> that's where we really want it to hold. And along the bottom, along the top. All right. So now look, this fits right over this. Okay. <clears throat> so instead of um, just burnishing this down, this strengthens the pocket. It also covers up any open um, like holes from where you joined your pocket together. And I'm looking for a scrap to go along the top as a border. That's pretty, but it's not long enough. Let's see what we have. Oh, look, how perfect. We get the best of both worlds. So I'm just putting my adhesive on here. And I'm going to come right along here. Just like that. We want it straight. I'm going to bring it right across the front. Oh, that's so exciting. See, I didn't plan that. You guys think I plan all this. I really don't. I just... um. I work with what's in front of me. Okay. Turn this off. And I could have measured that and all that, but really, I mean, at the end of the day, the end result is the same. And I didn't get any of the washi tape or anything that came with this collection. But look how, look how pretty that is, guys. That's really beautiful. So there's one last thing I want to show you how to do here before we move on. I'm also going to bring in my ruler, I think, and just line this up. See how I use the, yeah, see how I've got this lined up? I'm just going to bend this. So that we have a little bit of a um, a little bit of a spine there, <clears throat> because I think I want to put an accordion pull out up here. Let's take this absolutely amazing day. it down right here and then let's just take a little butterfly like that so pretty this is such a pretty collection and then up here let's put you are loved all right so that's all we're going to do for there for right okay now. to make my pull out page i've got two five and a half by eight and a half panels of that cream. And we're just gonna join those together. And feel free to use whatever adhesive you like, as long as it's a good, strong adhesive. I don't recommend using just an ordinary tape runner um, because you want this adhesive to hold. All right, so there's that. And then we're just going to line this up to make one big long panel. All right. So clearly, this paper was not exactly 11 inches because I've got a. Um, an overhang on the top, but I'll show you how we fix that. And let's go eight. Let's go four and a quarter. 
let's go eight and a half. Let's fold it. Let's go four and a quarter. Oh, it's gonna be like this. I make this little book. So I'm putting this in my cutter. I'm pretty sure this cutter will handle this. We'll find out, won't we? I know my big one will. I'm making sure I'm straight. And then I'm just cutting. And you see it took that little overhang off. So now we're even all the way across. So this is going to be our base sheet in here. We're just going to glue this down. This is four and three quarters by six and three quarters. And again, I want it kind of a plain pattern because we have a lot of pattern going on here. Um, so I wanted something that reads like a neutral, and this little dot reads like it's a solid. You see. So put that down. Let's just go ahead. This panel will be short, but it will be okay. We're just going to glue this down. Center it up on our page. It's pretty cool. All right. And see, now this will just open out like this. And we'll cover these with designer paper. So these will be four by five and a quarter, I think. Four by five and a quarter. Yes, four by five and a quarter you'll line these with except for this one on the bottom, which is smaller. So for this one, you will go, uh, let's say three and three quarters by five and a quarter, all right? So that's that, and I'm not gonna decorate that. You can decorate that yourself, but see now this goes over here. So where we want our magnet is on this front flap. So now we can bring, if we can find them, we can bring our magnets in. Um, you just take the adhesive off the back and I want this to be right about here because that means I can glue my paper down there without any problem and then I always take Ginger Rop, God bless her, taught me this trick. I miss her. She was a good friend. All right, and then you bring in your negative. All right. Take off your adhesive, bring this flap page over, press it down, ta-da, perfectly placed. So now you've got a little magnetic flap page. And um, a little adhesive right there. And Bring in your scoring tool. Let's go a half inch here. Oops. Oh, for heaven's sake. All right. And then what is the height on this? Seven. So six and three quarters. We want this to be seven and three quarters, and it's eight. So we want to cut off a quarter of an inch on one side. So line this up here and then score half inch. Again, line it up, score half inch. 
Bring in your scissors. Cut from the horizontal to the vertical and angle out. I know some of you have seen me do this probably a thousand times, but I never know when somebody new is gonna be here, so I feel like I always have to show it just to be polite. All right. Fold our little flaps in like this. Little adhesive. Little adhesive. Now, I'm not going to take, here's what I'm going to do, because if you don't, uh, if you leave that adhesive exposed, you're not going to be able to put anything in that pocket. So I'm just going to glue this piece down over that magnet. And these are really strong magnets. It's, it's going to still work even through this and the pocket. Okay. If I had thought, I would have put the magnet on the top of my pocket. That would have been the ideal thing to do. Okay, so center this up so that we're even top and bottom. And straight is always good. And then just press that down and there's a little side pocket. All right, so see, this still works. We're still good. And we might need to put one more magnet in there. So now you'll cover those up with your, and now we have a, that lays nice. All right, let's finish up the cover of this. Okay, we're almost finished here. I just want to show you our progress. You can see <clears throat> I went ahead and added a panel of the cream back behind our frame. I just felt like it made it look finished, even though you can't seem that, see that much of it. To me, it just looks finished this way. So on the inside, here's our little uh, flip folio. I just added a little scrap of the gingham up here with a sticker and a couple more stickers down here. Then this flips out. Here's our little pocket that we made. And I just put one of the four by six journal cards in there. You don't want to put anything too thick in there because you want the magnet to be able to grab. And this is how I put our pull-out folio together. I just put a, I, um, this is a three and three quarter by five and a quarter piece of patterned paper glued on three sides. And before I put that down, I put this little scrap of the polka dot behind it to make a pocket for this little tag that create I created out of um, one of the journal page elements. And I just cropped the corners and matted it, put a little string tie through the top. And then that sits in there. This little title is glued just on the bottom. And then I took this also from that journal page, kept these two images hooked together, scored between them and folded to make a little folio to tuck in there. So that's cute. And then this page turns this way. Actually, this, you know, we this opens out. We built this together. Um, so here's another one of those journal page elements that flips up. And you've got room here to do a little journaling. And then you've got room on the back for a little photo and then a larger photo here. This page flips over. Oops, I have to take this tag out to turn the pages. Um, this flips over and then just designer paper. I had to trim this piece and look, I just put the tiny little strip here just to, it just adds that pop of color and ties the two pages together and then just a little ticket from our um, ephemera pack. And then this opens out this way. And here I just scored a quarter of an inch on this four by four. So we have a little flip out page here. Um, this is another journal page, and this had a I scored along the top, so this flips down. You've got room to journal 
here and then this will flip up and then there's room for a photo and a photo and then over here there's our front page again so you have one two three four five six seven pages in this little mini folio and um, I really love the way this turned out and then down here in our little pocket all dressed up I've added in um, this is a tea bag lemon and ginger and then a bag of lemon and ginger crystals they're like a sweetener or you can just do them with water and drink them like a beverage they're really soothing and then one of my little vintage spoons Biscoff cookies, which go beautifully with the lemon, a little bit of chocolate, and then this sweet little note card. So you can put a photo and a note in there, or you can put two photos, however you want to do it. So that is the finished gift folio. Let me just get everything tucked back in here. There we go. I was getting stuck on the handle of the spoon. So what I want to show you is this, just this little finishing touch on the front cover. Um, and this is optional, of course. You don't have to do this, but I just love the way this looks. I just have a little bit of chalk paint. And I'm just going to go in and get a tiny bit of it on my brush. It doesn't take much. And I'm going to spritz it with some water. just need to refill my water bottle here. Well, let's just do it this way. I just like to dilute it a little bit and my chalk paint is getting kind of old so it um it's kind of thick so I diluted that a little too much it's harder to control without the sprayer go ahead and grab some more so you want it you know kind of opaque but not too thick I'm gonna have so much extra paint but I got way too much water in there okay and honestly, the older and rottier your paintbrush is, the better this works. So tap it off lightly here and then just come over here and tap it. I'm holding the end of the brush and I'm just tapping it lightly. And if you get some in a place that you don't like, like if you don't want it directly on the butterfly, you can just come in and wipe that off. It's diluted so it it goes, you can see, you can make it go completely away. So if you get one that you don't like, you can come in and you can try again. There, and that will dry on its own. And once it dries, it, it fades quite a lot because, you know, the paint is so diluted. But I just like to add those little spatters. I think it adds a really nice finishing touch and gives it that vintage kind of spotted, age spotted look. So there you go, guys. That is it for this week's Make and Take Tuesday. I hope you enjoyed, and um, I'll be back this week with a Throwback Thursday. I couldn't do it last week because I had a blog hop on that day, and I can only fit so much in a day. But anyway, there you go. I hope you enjoyed it. Simple Stories Winter Garden. Really sweet little box pocket folio. Kathy Clement, Kathy by Design. Please give this video a like. It really helps YouTube share it out there and makes it worth my while for all the time that it takes me to put one of these together and I love hearing your comments. I re I respond to every single comment. So, okay guys, go get your craft on. Bye.